In this video, I want to go over the five most important things that I learned from doing my PhD and finishing it in three years with three published papers. And I guarantee that if you apply each of these tips in the order that I'm going to present them to you, you're going to really boost your PhD progress and you'll feel much more confident and you'll be able to write better papers and ultimately do a better PhD faster. What are these five lessons that I learned? Well, let's dive right in and get into it. So I'm going to present each of the five lessons that I learned from my PhD to you in sort of the reverse order from the least to the most important. So from number five to number one. So you definitely want to stick until the end of the video to also get the most important tip. Now with that said, and before we dive into tip number five, if you're new here, my name is Marek Kiczkowek and I run Academic English Now where we help PhD students and researchers regularly publish research papers in high impact journals. And if you're enjoying this video, then click the like, subscribe button so you don't miss future videos. So lesson number five that I learned from doing my own PhD in just three years with three published papers is to be persistent. And this might seem like something very straightforward, but it's actually really, really difficult. Like all of us can start things, right? You can decide you're going to do something like, you know, for example, you're going to go to the gym and you're going to start it. But what happens is that, you know, 90% of the people quit going to the gym after a month or two months because it's tough. And it's the same with the PhD, right? You know, anyone can decide to start the PhD and get into the PhD. I mean, it's, it's not that difficult. The difficult part is to actually persist through your PhD for three, four, five, maybe six years, right? This is really difficult. And I think learning how to be persistent is, you know, one of magic skills really that will take you very far later on in life because anything great that you want to achieve is difficult. And in order to achieve those difficult things, you've got to be persistent. And that means that you've got to show up for work. You've got to show up to the gym. You've got to show up for your PhD every single day. Whether you feel like it or not, that's irrelevant. Whether you feel motivated to actually do some writing and read the literature or do some experiments in the lab, that's irrelevant. You just have to continue. Right? And whether you know, you're, you're getting good results initially, you're not getting good results, um, whether you're feeling slightly disappointed or you're feeling very happy, you have to be persistent and you have to show up. Now you might be wondering like, how do you develop this sort of persistence? Like there is no you know, magic pill to it that I could give to you and make you more persistent. You know, you develop persistence through basically trying to be more persistent every single day. Right? So the only thing that you have to do is, you know, set a goal for yourself and then divide that goal into exactly what you're going to do each day and then show up each day. And at the beginning, it's going to be really difficult to show up, especially if you're a master procrastinator and you like to postpone things and like, and you don't persist, right? So you just have to overcome this initial discomfort and show up on day one and then persist on day two. And if you get knocked back, persist on day three and just regularly show up and be persistent. And it's gonna become easier. And now, you know, once you've started to develop this persistence and you've been consistently showing up and doing what you're supposed to be doing for a longer period of time, there will be those moments where you kind of feel like, well, I don't need to show up today. Surely like, you know, I've been, I've been writing regularly for the last three months, every single day. You know, if I don't write today, it's fine. But that's just your mind trying to trick you not to do the difficult stuff. And whenever you hear that thought in your head, you just have to punch it really hard, knock it out, and then persist and continue doing what you're supposed to be doing, right? That's the secret of persistence. So that's um, lesson number five, being persistent. Now being persistent is of course one thing, but another thing is being persistent towards a specific long-term goal. And that's really lesson number four that I learned from doing my PhD in three years. And that is setting long-term goals. Because 
a lot of us really go through life without setting any sort of goals or the goals that we set for ourselves are very vague such as well I'd like to finish my PhD when well ideally before my funding runs out and I'd like to publish some papers how many when you know we've often very vague about our goals and what you need to do is set very clear achievable um, time-bound goals for the future and for the long term and you've got to be thinking long term because another problem apart from the fact that people don't set clear goals is that they're also you know thinking very short term they're kind of like a lot of us go through life waking up in the morning and kind of deciding okay today is Tuesday so maybe I'll go to the lab and do X Y and Z and you know today is Thursday so maybe I'm just gonna read something for my literature review but it's not really planned and as a result like you might be persistent and you feel like you're working a lot and you're doing a lot of stuff but you're actually you know going away from the path that you were supposed to be following because you got confused your goals weren't clear right and you're just like diverging from the path on which you actually should be right so think long term set a long term goal and it's got to be clear something like you know by the end of 2024 I want to have three published papers in Q1 journals Scopus index journals and I want to have submitted my PhD thesis as well right and once you've got a clear goal like that then you can break it down into smaller goals like what are the intermediate goals that you need to achieve in order to achieve this overall goal right for example you need to collect data for each of these papers right you need to read the literature you need to write those papers you need to submit them you need to respond to reviewers comments and things like that right and then you can map out those smaller intermediate goals into your schedule as well and then once you've got a smaller more intermediate goal like you know I need to collect data for experiment number one for research paper number one and you've got a deadline for it well then you can also map out the sort of daily and weekly actions that you've got to be taking and then you know when you when you combine it with persistence then you know you're going to be progressing really quickly because you've got clear goals you know exactly what you need to be doing each day each week each month to achieve your short and long-term goals and then you know you're persistent and you show up daily and you do the things that you're supposed to do and that's when real magic happens so um, lesson number four is to set long-term goals now lesson number three which is kind of connected to lesson number five and lesson number four is to try to be one percent better every day so very often what paralyzes us as researchers or PhD students but also in other aspects of our life is that we sort of you know we aim for perfection and we compare ourselves to like the published researchers right and we read a paper that was published in nature we look at our own paper and you know immediately we think well our own paper is nonsense like it's so bad my writing is terrible and as a result like you feel like you're so far away from that goal that you lose motivation to progress so what you want to do is to try to just be one percent better every single day what do I mean by that well let's say at this stage you know you're able to only write 300 words a day right that's fine well set a goal for yourself to tomorrow to try to write 310 words and then you know in three days you want to be writing 350 words a day right if you're able to just read like one paper in one hour well try tomorrow to read one paper in 50 minutes or 55 minutes and then the next day try to read it in 50 minutes and then each day you're being one percent better and like this you can also track your progress and feel more motivated because you see yourself moving forward and this increases motivation happiness drive and you know you'll start feeling more confident because you see your skills growing right so uh, lesson number three is to try to be one percent better every single day lesson number two from my PhD is that the grass isn't greener somewhere else the grass is greener wherever you water it what do I mean by that well there is this saying right that you know the grass is always greener on the other side meaning that you know we kind of always think that 
things are better someplace else, right? Or maybe if we, if we do something else, things are going to be better, right? And we tend to kind of like view our situation as a result negatively. And we constantly think that, you know, like we maybe need to switch things and go somewhere else in order to be happier. But really, you know, if you want to be happy right here, right now, you've got to work on it. Like just doing something else and going to a different grass on the other side isn't going to make you happier. Isn't, it isn't going to speed up your PhD at all. If you want to speed up your PhD, you've got to water the grass where you currently are. And you've got to work on the skills that you need in order to get to your PhD. And this is much harder than going somewhere else, right? And viewing the grass on the other side as greener. It is much harder to actually look at your own grass and see that it's, yeah, it, it, it's not looking really good. Like it's, it's pretty dry and you know, ground is coming through the grass and like, you know, there are no flowers at all and nothing. But you know, to look at it critically and then try to do something about your current situation. You know, water the grass, work on your skills, and that's the only way you're going to really succeed. Not just in your PhD, but I think in life in general, because you're always going to encounter situations that are difficult. Situations that will make you feel like the grass is greener over there, like I shouldn't be doing it, it's just so tough, I don't like it. And then you just quit, right? All great things are difficult to do. And as a result, like try to remember that, you know, grass is gonna be green if you water it where you currently are. You don't have to go anywhere else. Now, um, lesson number one, and absolutely the most important lesson I think that I learned from my own PhD and from being able to finish it in three years with three published papers, is to be okay with negative feedback or even better to embrace negative feedback, to embrace mistakes. So very often I think what happens is that when we get negative feedback, we kind of, you know, lock ourselves up in our shell and we kind of refuse to accept it. Even though we tell ourselves, yeah, I'm open to feedback, of course. Tell me what's wrong with my paper, I'm open to changing my ways. But really there are very few people out there who say it and actually mean it. For a lot of people, you know, when they get very negative comments on the writing, their reaction is very often defensive. You know, so they straight away try to sort of like argue with those comments and why maybe those comments don't actually apply to their text and they try to argue, you know, why, they, why their text is actually pretty okay. You know, and this happens in other areas of, of our lives as well, that, you know, it's, it's difficult sometimes to, to get knocked down and like receive really harsh, but honest and constructive feedback and then be okay with it. But if you want to progress with your PhD faster and then if you want to be successful later on in life, you've just got to accept it, you know? And you've got to remember that like greatness and perfection, you know, is not born in one day, it's just greatness and perfection is basically a series of mistakes that were corrected through a lot of negative feedback and a lot of persistence and action, right? Nobody becomes the best at something without negative feedback. Everybody gets a ton of negative feedback as they go through life or through their PhD and only those people that accept the negative feedback, improve on it and move on are the ones that actually succeed in life. So that's absolutely the number one lesson that I learned from doing my PhD. If this sounds helpful and you would like to speed up your PhD journey, if you'd like to publish research papers in high impact journals, then schedule a free one-to-one -one consultation where we're going to go over the current challenges that you're facing, specify your goals, and then show you how you can get to those goals faster and with greater ease. And the link to schedule that free one-to-one -one call is right below this video.